All right, moving on to the 2020 AOIME problem number four. Triangles ABC and A prime, B prime, C prime lie in the coordinate plane with vertices, and it's gonna list six vertices here. Do you really think you're gonna process what those vertices are doing without graphing them or something? You're not, so just skip reading it for now. Don't waste the time. A rotation of M degrees clockwise, and most rotations and problems are counterclockwise, around the point XY, so that's a little bit of a twist, where M, the rotation angle, is between zero and 180, will transform one triangle to the other. Find the sum of the angle of rotation plus the coordinates of the ordered pair. Notice how I change the wording of what's written. You should do that too to help you process what they're writing. Try not to leave things as they are, but think about them in a different way to help you process. So it's a little overwhelming with the six points. Can you really do anything with this off the top of your head? Mm, if you can't think of anything, there is a way. I mean, if you're like a ninja black belt level status with rotations and transformations in the plane, then maybe you don't need to draw a picture. But for the rest of us, maybe a picture will help. All of these are in the first quadrant, so let's go ahead and draw a first quadrant. The point of making a picture is to try to, to give yourself some intuitive idea of how you might proceed. Um, especially if you don't know off the top of your head. So we start with A being 0, 0, the origin. B is 0, 12. Just pick a random point, you know, a little ways away. Uh, and we'll call that B. And C is 16, 0. Try to be somewhat accurate with the space. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if this is 12, that'll be 12 approximately. Then 16 is about right here and this will be C, 16, comma, zero. It calls it a triangle, so let's go ahead and make a triangle, right, like that. All right, now for A prime, 24. Notice that 16 is two-thirds of 24. So if I cut 16 in half, eight would be here, then this would be another eight, and this would be another eight, so 24 would be here. And going to go up to 18. 18 does the same thing. 12 is 2 thirds, so cut it in half to get 1 third, which is 6. This will be 6, 6, and one more 6 will give us 18 approximately here. Uh, so we'll put this point here, and that is A prime 24 comma 18. Then B prime is 36, 18. Well, 24 is 2 thirds, so again, cut it in half to about right here, and try to keep that same distance to get to 36. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, but you're just trying to have somewhat accurate so that your intuition is a little bit more coordinated. Um, B prime is 36, 18. And now for C prime located at 24, 2, gonna be approximately here. I think from the side, I don't think I had A prime in the right spot. So then uh, this will be C prime. Let's connect first here and we'll label C prime as 24 comma two. Okay, so now let's think about this whole rotation thing. We're going clockwise, so you kind of have to have to rotate this way somewhere. That puts our point of rotation, I don't know, somewhere, it kind of comes with a little bit of experience, but it's probably somewhere around here or so, uh, right where my 16 is. So uh, for example, what will happen is A, you could connect to this point of rotation, and I'm gonna put an arrow here and call it D, because we haven't used D for anything yet. And then from that point, you will rotate up to A prime. Now we have to think, what do we know about rotations and how can we find the coordinates of D, which is the X comma Y point? Sorry for the mess here, but I didn't plan to you know, have a point on top of where I wrote the coordinates, so it is what it is. Um, okay, so yeah, what do we know about rotations? Well, here's what we know. It preserves the distance between A and the point of rotation and that point to A prime. That is a fundamental concept that I don't think you can do this problem without knowing, but you might be able to. I don't make any claim that the way that I solve these problems is always the fastest or the most beautiful or most efficient way, but it is the way that I solved it. Oftentimes it will be the fastest way, but sometimes it's not. Some of you guys are really smart and you know some really fast ways and I'm sure you might see somebody else with a super sweet shortcut to this. So 
A to D, D to A prime, well, what do we do with that information? Let's think about what we know. And this is what you should do on the test. Ask yourself, what do I know? And based on what I know, what can be determined with that information? So we know that we have two points, A and A prime. And we know that there's a point that they're rotating around like this, and we know these distances are equal distances. Well, then that might make us think, if we were really good at geometry, you should recall that any point that is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment is on the perpendicular bisector of that segment. So this is true for every point that's rotated. So B to B prime will have the same scenario then if we could just find the equation of these perpendicular bisectors, we could set the two equations equal, and we will find their intersection point, which must be dx comma y. So let's set about doing that. All right, so the perpendicular bisector of a, a prime, the segment. Um, we're going to need two points. You need this point right here, which is the midpoint of a a prime, so let's get that first. How do you get a midpoint? It's just the average of the coordinates. We're nice enough to have the origin for one of them here, so we just cut these in half. It's going to be 12 comma 9. So the midpoint is 12 comma 9. Now what do we need? We have a point, and we're going to use point slope form. It's what I like to use. So because of that, we need a slope. Not the slope of a a prime, the slope of d to the midpoint. So let's find the slope of AA prime, and since it's perpendicular, we'll use negative reciprocal as a common concept. So the slope from A to A prime, since you're coming through the origin, any line through the origin has slope y over x. Uh, be careful, 18 over 24 is not 2 thirds. I did do that when I was solving it on my own and later found my mistake, but just be careful. So actually, uh, 6 goes into 18 3 times, and 6 goes into 24 4 times, it's 3 fourths. So we will say m1 equals 3 fourths, and m2 is equal to the negative reciprocal. Um, traditionally, I call m1 the first slope that I work with, and m2 the second slope that I work with. Kind of logical, right? So we want the second slope, negative 4 thirds, y minus y1 of 9. Again, you're using the midpoint as your point and the slope of this line. So y minus 9 equals the slope we want, negative 4 thirds times x minus 12. Let's go ahead and distribute. y minus 9 equals negative 4 thirds x. Um, 48 over 3 is 16. It will be positive because there's two negatives. Always tell yourself that stuff. If you're saying it in your head, you're less likely to make a mistake while you're working. You also shouldn't be working too fast. This is the AIME, essentially. You have three hours, I believe it's 12 minutes per question. You have plenty of time. Don't rush. Make sure you go slow enough that you don't make mistakes like two-thirds here or something like that. It's just not worth it. Okay, so we're going to add 9, and you'll get y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 25. Negative 4 thirds x. I almost wrote 27. All right, so negative 4 thirds x plus 25. I put a box around it, so I'll draw attention to it later. Let's do the process one more time with b, b prime. So the perpendicular bisector of b, b prime. Also, in the back of your head, you might kind of have this thought right about now that says, yeah, but how am I going to find the angle of rotation? You need to tell that thought to STFU. Do Basically, if you don't, that means look it up. Okay, it's, shut up. Don't listen to that thought. It's going to distract you. Just do this. Worry about the angle of rotation later. Coordinate a plan for that later. Get partway through the problem, getting the x and y coordinate, you'll feel better about yourself. You'll have basically two-thirds of the answer, because two out of the three values that you need, and then go about attacking the last part. So don't leave that thought in your mind. Banish it away, and don't listen to that part of your mind thinking that way. My mind does that too. It's thinking ahead about, yeah, but how am I going to... No, no, shut up, brain. Don't tell me that right now. Just do this, okay? So perpendicular bisector of BB prime. Again, we want the midpoint. This time we're at 0, 0,12, so we have the average of 0 and 36 is 18, and the average of 30, 12 plus 8, 12 and 18 average, 30 over 2 is 15. And what about the slope? Uh, 
Again, we're not in a rush, so go ahead and do it. 18 minus 12 over 36 minus 0. That's 6 over 36. So m1 is 1 sixth, and m2 is the negative reciprocal, which is negative 6. Okay, so then let's make a line out of that. We need y minus y1, which is 15. Again, you might go even slow here, point to it if you want, things like that to make sure we're not making mistakes because it's not going to be as easy to tell you made a mistake when your answers are between 0 and 999. It's not multiple choice, right? So then uh, negative 6 times uh, x minus 18. All right, so then distribute negative 6x, 6 times 10 is 60, and 48 is 108. Again, it's positive because of two negatives. These are internal thoughts that you should be saying as you do it. Go ahead and add 15. Even write it sometimes. You can afford to on the Amy. Part of the problem for you on the test is that you're really smart. Really, not really smart people don't make it to the AIME. I'm sorry, they just don't. So everybody who qualified, you're honestly really smart and you know that about yourself. And your brain says, I have a supercharged engine inside. I'm going to go super fast. And you have to say, no brain, don't do that. Because 999 times out of 1,000, you'll probably do it correctly. But if you do that one time out of 1,000 on the test and spoil your chance to get to USA, JMO, or AMO, you're going to be miffed. So don't worry about this time consumption right here. 12 minutes per question is a long time. So, uh, y equals negative 6x plus 123. Now we set this equation equal to that equation. So, negative 6x plus 123 is equal to negative 4 thirds x plus 25. I'm going to subtract 25, and that's 2 more than the 23 it takes to get to 100. So, that'll give me 98. I'm going to turn this into something over 3. So 18 over 3 is 6, right? And we're going to add it because it's negative now. So 18 over 3 minus 4 over 3 is 14 over 3x. Again, write it down if you don't know what you did. 18 over 3x minus 4 over 3x. 18 minus 4 is 14 over 3. And we feel good right now because in your brain, you're probably saying 14 goes into 98. Yes! That means you're going to get an integer, and we kind of need integers for this problem. It doesn't have to be technically. X and Y could both be something over 3, and they could add. But, you know, it does feel a little bit more comfortable when we get an integer out of it. So it's 3 fourteenths times 98. 14 goes into 98 seven times, and we get that X is 21. How we get Y, you just plug it in, right? So negative 6 times 21 is negative 126 plus 123. That is negative 3 for y. And let's check it in this over here. Just check it. You have, you have time to check, right? They're easy numbers to check. So negative 4 thirds times 21. This goes in 7 times. You get negative 28 plus 25. Sure enough, we get negative 3. So here's what this tells us. If we found the perpendicular bisectors correctly, then this is the correct point. So, uh, this ordered pair is 21, negative 3. That is our xy. We want to draw attention to it. Now we got to worry about that angle of rotation. So, I'm going to clear a little bit of board space over here so I have some room. Um, okay, so how are we going to get that? Well, let's think about it. We had that a to a prime line drawn, and you had the midpoint. Uh, we can call it V or something. It doesn't really matter. I was going to use M, but M's already in use. And you have D down here like this. Well, think about it. Is the angle going to be something weird, 37 degrees? How would you get a 37 degree angle unless you know your trig values for things like 37? No, it's probably not going to be. It's probably going to be a nice angle, like 30, 50. Uh, 15 possible, but not likely. 30, 45, 60, or 90, right? One of the common angles. Maybe even 120 or something in the second quadrant. So how can we get it? Just think about it. How far is it from A to V? V was the midpoint right here, right? It was 12, 9. Well, since A is 0, 0, this is simply Pythagorean triples 9, 12, 15. 
this distance from A to V, again, V being the midpoint, um, this is 15. Go ahead and find this distance again just to see what happens. We don't know it's going to work out in our favor, but let's just see what happens. We know this is 90 degrees, right? And so then what? Um, okay, then if you find this distance here, um, V to D, D was the point 21, negative 3. So uh, 9 minus a negative 3 is 12 squared plus 12 minus 21 is negative 9 squared. Hey, look, it's a 9, 12, 15 again, which means you're going to get 15 here. That means this is 45 and this is 45. And perpendicular bisectors make congruent triangles, so this must also be 45, making the angle of rotation 90 degrees. If you drew a somewhat accurate picture, the angle should even look like it's 90 degrees approximately. That's what it is. So now we add 90 plus 21 minus 3, which is 18. So 90 plus 18 is 108. That's the answer, and we're on to the next problem.